MTN Sports. This is Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome into Bobcat Insider. I'm Ashley Washburn alongside Keaton Gologly. And what a weekend inside the brick. It was partying like it was 1999 because they broke a record 1999. Both the men and the women were able to get regular season sweeps over the Grizz. What a fun weekend inside the brick. And just, you know, it's one of those weekends as a Bobcat fan, you have to just, you don't take for granted, right? No, not so at all. So many people have been through the ups and downs and everything that goes from year to year. And right now, things are up. And, and how much fun was it, too, to celebrate those games, but also celebrate the football team? You get the Brawl of the Wild trophy, you get the Great Divide trophy, walked around, dropping the banner. I mean, those types of things in that type of game, just take it up one extra notch. Well, you love it in those rivalry games, too, because obviously football clinched it against Montana. So, you know, of course they had to show that trophy with them in their house. But let's talk about that men's game because uh, up and down is maybe a way to say it. I've never seen maybe that many fouls called in a game, uh, but they were fouls, though. I mean, it's a physical game, and they just were getting called on them. Well, and it was one of those things, too, we kind of talked about on the radio broadcast that, you know, when we looked at the crew, it was either going to be a pretty loose game or it was going to be a tightly whistled game. And, you know, as long as the officials are, are consistent, that's all that matters. And For I think sure. even though there were so many free throws early in that game, it did feel consistent. They called it tight the whole game. And, you know, Montana State has an advantage in a tightly whistled game. They're more deep. You know, they've got way more depth off the bench, and they've been a really good free throw shooting team in the second half of the Big Sky season. So although it was a lot of free throws, there were a lot of fouls on both sides. Well, and it was a good thing that they were making those free throws because they really didn't get many of that and that many field goal attempts in the first half, and that's why they were able to take that one point, uh, two point lead hang, heading into half. But let's talk about Darius Brown, too, because obviously we're talking about the offensive side of the game. A lot of that offense was fueled by Darius Brown and what he was able to do on defense. No question. And another three steals for Darius Brown mm -hmm. in this game. So it's now the 11th time in program history somebody has put together a 50-steal season at Montana State. So he's into the top 10 now all time on that single season list. And, you know, it's just so much fun even watching the demeanor. Like, he loves it so much. We're going to ask Danny Sprinkle about this in just a bit. But the energy he brings and, like, that little smirk he gets is hilarious. I was going to say, when you start seeing that smile and basketball, like, oh, he's feeling himself <laughs> right now. Uh, just quickly, though, give us a quick landscape of what's next for this Montana State team. Three games left of the regular season. It's crunch time. Right, and Eastern Washington has already clinched a share of the Big Sky Championship in the regular season. But for Montana State, we'll see if Jabril Bello can kind of refine his form. But I think the depth on this team has really showed out. Tyler Patterson has gotten hot from three, which is absolutely important for Montana State. And it looks like they've got a great shot at the two seed as we head towards that Big Sky Tournament coming up next week. All right, we're going to take a break. Head coach Danny Sprinkle join us after this time out of the Bobcat Insider. Take coverage of the Cats with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. We're back on Bobcat Insider. I'm Keaton Glogley alongside head coach Danny Sprinkle. And the Bobcats coming off their win uh, against the Grizzlies at Worthington Arena. And coach, uh, your first sweep of the Grizzlies as a head coach. How good does it feel? Yeah, it feels great. You know, obviously, I mean, this, this rivalry means a lot to a lot of people in Montana. And, and for our guys to come out and compete and, and play the way they did in front of a great crowd uh, was absolutely awesome. That was a great crowd for you, great crowd yeah. for the women, over uh, 10,000 combined between the two yeah. games. What was the atmosphere like from your perspective in this game? It was great. You know, I mean, it, it gives us and the women both, you know, a six to eight point advantage. You know, when they're like that and they show up and they're loud, you know, it just gives you more energy. It gives you that, that extra push, especially in that second half. All right, well, let's get into this ball game now. For certainly one of the major storylines early in this game was free throw shooting, and it yep. did kind of just feel like early in this game, we saw some tight free throws, and we knew it was going to be a tight whistled game. Mm -hmm. Did you guys adjust to the way the, the officials were calling this game early? Uh, I mean, not really. We just wanted to stay aggressive. And, uh, I mean, I watched the game twice, and they were fouls, period. I don't care how many free throws we shot. We probably could have shot more, to be honest with you. And so it is what it is, and, and that's what happens when you're the aggressor. And, you know, they were aggressive, too, um, you know, but it, that's what a Cat Grizz game is. Yeah, it's supposed to be physical. Yeah. That's the way it's supposed to get done. And, you know, in that game, too, it did seem like in that second half, Jabril Bello was really trying to stay out of foul trouble. Did you feel like some of that foul trouble kind of slowed him on the defensive side a little bit? No question. I mean, we had two of the best players in the league sit out the last 10 minutes of the first half. You know, so if you want to complain about foul trouble, we can. But we also had, two, like I said, two of the best players in the league, the league MVP coming back. And so... You know, they had, they had to be smarter. You know, they, they got some ticky-tack fouls in the first half, and, and I know they were kind of anxious to get back into the second half, and they were probably a little too aggressive early. Uh, but then Jabril, you know, he got his third foul, uh, and Ray, and so we had to kind of 
monitor that situation the last 10 minutes of the game, especially the way the game was being called. Right, it was tight, mm -hmm. it was close, it was a great ball game. Raekwon Battle had some great buckets at, down the stretch, but quickly before we kind of get into that second half, you know, that play drew up to get Tyler Patterson that open three at the end of the first half. That just looked like it worked out to perfection and certainly provided a big boost going into halftime. It was, you know, and I got to give credit to our guys, our players that were on the court. You know, we didn't call a timeout, I don't believe in the, you know, they, they ran the play and great made a, Nick made a great read hitting great. And then obviously great shovel it off to Darius and, you know, Darius, you know, he made a tremendous play when they helped in. Yeah, and Tyler Patterson now, I mean, this is four straight games in which he's hit multiple three-point field goals, yep. shooting 50% over these last four games. Seems like he's kind of getting back into a rhythm here down the stretch. He is, and he's going to keep getting open shots, you know, with our post guys playing the way they are and Darius. Uh, you know, we had, we had a bunch of wide open shots that we missed too. You know, not Tyler, but we had a bunch of shots that, you know, could have really opened up the game that we got to knock down if we want to continue to be successful. Well, we know Montana can open up the mm -hmm. game pretty easy from beyond the arc, but it seemed like you guys really slowed them down, at least at that mm -hmm. perimeter side. How'd you feel about your defensive performance in this game? I thought it was tremendous. You know, we had some of our, you know, I have some clips I'm going to show our guys today. You know, there's probably three or four possessions that may have been our best, po best possessions defensively all season. You know, we were flying around. We did a great job switching at times. And, uh, you know, when you have a guy like Moody who can really shoot it, you know, and Thomas and Bannon, all the, you know, Vasquez, all those guys can shoot it. And so, you know, we did a really good job, you know, guarding the paint, but then also guarding the three-point line. Darius Brown, another three steals in this game. So yep. Brown is now top 10 in the single season steals list at Montana State. And it just, it almost looks like he's even enjoying defense even more. <laughs> like, you see that smile he's getting on yep. his face? No, he is. And, you know, he had some even, I don't know if they gave him credit for one. He had one where he caused the guy to go. Uh, step over the line and I don't think he got credited for that steal you know out of bounds and so he's done a great job but he, you know his, the job he did on Whitney was tremendous and it helped us. Yeah it's been a lot of fun watching yeah. that portion of it. Uh, Raekwon battle another star performance here was another 19 point shot 50% yep. from the field and it just feels like every time it comes down to the wire when you need some buckets he's the guy to start knocking down those shots. Yeah he had three huge baskets in the second half. Uh, two were pull-up jumpers and one drive that you know when we were kind of struggling to score a little bit uh, you know, and we were taking away the three-point line, especially on their end, and they were kind of driving, they were getting some twos, and they kind of whittled into the lead, uh, and, and Raekwon made two just tremendous jump shots. But yeah. that's what he does. Right, and it, it was cool, too, I think, you know, after the game, that was, you know, on the eve of his birthday, yeah. he got that beautiful yeah. Native American blanket from yes. one of his family friends. It's just so much fun watching the support that he has showing up to every one of these games. No question, and, uh, you know, I know how much he means to his community, I know how much the community means to him, and uh, it's been tremendous, you know, us and the women, you know, obviously with, you know, the game a couple of weeks ago and, and uh, you know, just being in Montana with a lot of the reservations here and, and how, how important basketball is to them and how important they are to us. And it's been tremendous. All right, well, here we go. We're getting into the final week of the regular season before the Big Sky Tournament. The Bobcats have two home games, and then they are on the road for that Monday affair over in Cheney against Eastern Washington. But starting out this weekend, another game against Sac State on Thursday and then Senior Day on Saturday. Uh, but this is a Sac State team that's going to be a really, really difficult matchup. They've got some big guys in that front court. They are. They're, they're one of the scariest teams in the league. You know, they have a great post guy, Callum McRae, who's one of the leading rebounders. He's 7'1", 280. Uh, and I mean, he's, he's a mountain down there, and they got tremendous athletes on the perimeter. And so they're, they're dangerous. You know, they obviously had a great win at home last week on their senior night. And uh, I know they're going to try to continue that rolling. But we, our job, we just got to gotta be us, as we tell these guys. We got to continue to get better. And we just got to try to go 1-0 on Thursday. Sounds like a plan. Go 1 on Thursday, 1-0 yep. on Saturday, 1-1 exactly. on Monday, and then just run it exactly. all through the tournament. <laughs> all right, well, that's what's coming up for Montana State as the Bobcats will finish up the home portion of their Big Sky Conference schedule on Thursday and on Saturday. For head coach Danny Sprinkle, I'm Keaton Gologly. We'll be back with Ashley Washburn after this on the Bobcat Insider. Get social with Bobcat fans and follow MTN Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. We're back on the Bobcat Insider. I'm Keaton Gologli alongside Ashley Washburn. We're going to turn our attention now to the first place women's basketball team. And Ashley, with only three games to go, the Bobcats need one win for a share of the Big Sky regular season championship. It seems like, you know, this is what we've been waiting for. We've seen how well Montana State's been doing, but there's also been a lot of really good depth within the Big Sky Conference. But they're one win away. They're going to play at Portland State or Sacramento State this Thursday first. And you get a win over Sacramento State. 
you've got to share the title. And it's so exciting for this team, for this program, for this group of seniors, which will be honored on Monday against Eastern mm -hmm. Washington. But, you know, you think about this senior class that had come in with such success on such a great team four years ago, and now here they are with an opportunity to finish their careers with more terrific success. Well, it, it, the big part of that four years was sustaining the success. Now it's the expectation of how successful they are. And you look at the senior class, and you've got Darian White, Cola Badbear, Madison Jackson, Grace Beasley. And for most part, they all have an extra year of eligibility with COVID. Don't know if they're going to come back at this point, but what they've done with this program, and you look at players like Cola Badbear, who just had a tremendous game against Montana on Saturday, as well as Darian White. And it's hard to see them go, but the impact they've left on this program, now that's the expectation. And you're only going to see get better and better year after year. And it was a definitely a nice weekend, too, just to celebrate the history as mm -hmm. well. The 92-93 team was there. Katie Bussey went into the Bobcat Hall of Fame on Friday night. And so you're seeing all of this great success and, and the history of how they got here. And if you're, I mean, if you're a basketball fan, this has just been so much fun to watch and kind of celebrate over the course of the year. Well, and you, when you see this history, too, not only does it just make you a bigger fan of Montana State, but you see why you would maybe want to go to Montana State and be a part of that history. And I know that Judy Spolster in that 92 93 team was able to be at practice this past week and really get Montana State ready for that game on Saturday. It's something that we're going to talk to uh, uh, with Coach Benford about coming up after this break. There's more coverage of the Bobcats online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider. I'm Ashley Washburn alongside Bobcat Women's Head Basketball Coach and talk about a weekend inside the brick. A two, uh, a two point win for Montana State over the Lady Grizz to cap off that regular season sweep. But to do it in front of 3,500 fans, I mean, that place was just absolutely rocking. How special was it from your point? Uh, always special when you look at a corner and you see uh, all the bucket hats full of uh, students. So thank you to all the students for showing out. And then you have your spirit squad, your band, and your community. And um, it's just very gratifying uh, what what community this community does to support the Bobcats. Well, and on games like this, you know, this is when you get all the former players that get to come out. You had Blair Braxton there, Fallon Frigi, but you also had the 92-93 team there, which was just so special. One of Montana State's probably most special teams being able to go to March Madness for the first time. And Judy Spolster was also there and got to talk to the team earlier in the week. Can you just talk about that moment and maybe how that energized the team this Saturday? Well, for sure. I mean, every day was something something new as far as a uh, motivation standpoint. But when we brought her out to the team huddle after Thursday's practice uh, and talked about the years of the, the, the first NCAA tournament, they immediately all looked at the banner. And, uh, and then when they looked back at Judy of, hey, the first team to ever do this, uh, she used the words fearless uh, or the word fearless of, you know, you're getting ready for, you know, Big Sky Tournament. This is the time that you just kind of put it out there and you're attack minded. And uh, she just had everybody glued in. Everybody leaned in a little bit closer. And it was just nice to have it heard from somebody different and somebody who's who's proven and uh, just a really special moment. And then the team got to come uh, to practice Friday. So it was just continuing day after day of them seeing just kind of champions surrounding them. Well, I like that word fearless because I think that was the best word to describe maybe that post play that we <laughs> yeah. saw on Saturday. It was a close game at the end, but there was a 14 point lead that you guys had in that final frame. And it really came down to the post play outscoring Montana 44 to 22 on those low blocks. Talk about Cola and Lexi's performance on Saturday because they really just couldn't be stopped. It looked like. Well, you know, the game plan is always you're going to go through your post and see mm -hmm. what they do defensively. And so sometimes we see double teams, sometimes we see fronts in uh, uh, this particular game they kind of took our, our perimeter action away on the inside out uh, and ba probably based on uh, how Kohler really picked a, apart from the Idaho State game and so our, our post kind of took a pause and uh, looked at the situation and then they went to work and then the guard play we want to credit them as well because they continued just finding them you know um, when you have the caliber of those two and what they're doing right now and the rotations of our post uh, just they're kind of at another level uh, they're playing really um, with just great wisdom out there as far as being aggressive but knowing when to get involved in uh, they just were very intentional um, but that was intention uh, for the entire team so what a what a fun weekend to watch them go to work
Well, let's talk about Cola for a little bit because she just seemed to really have her way that game, matching a career high 23 points, which did include a pair of triples. It was great to see her shoot the ball beyond the perimeter. What did you see just in her play on Saturday? Because I think, you know, she's mentioned that maybe that this is her last go around with Montana State, and I think she really just put it all out all out on the floor on Saturday. Well, I guess she listened to Judy because she was fearless. And uh, I would tell you the very first uh, open three she passed up. And I'm I'm pretty sure she probably heard Darian. She probably heard <laughs> myself and then Coach Mays from the sidelines saying shoot the ball because uh, Coach Mays really worked on that shot with her all week. Um, so they, she's just kind of been drilling the shots that we expect her to get in, in particular games. And the fact that she looked for those shots uh, late in the game was really fun to watch. And just a, it's so, so fun to watch somebody who's put in so much time and effort uh, to get the fruit of their labor and uh, it, was, it was a great moment. And I think it all culminated for her at the end of that game because my favorite moment came after the final buzzer and as she was stepping off you could just see the emotion kind of take over. She had tears in her eyes. What was that moment like for you though being able to see a senior like that put it out all on the floor um, but then get emotional of just you know how much she loves this Bobcat team and just, you know, everything that she's done in the last four years. Well, we always talk about journey um, being as important as, uh, you know, the very end. And we want to celebrate the entire journey. And uh, you do that together. You do that as a family. You do that with great chemistry and you work at it. You know, it's not easy. Um, but when you get a look in that huddle and uh, celebrate the people that you love every day, it just makes it a, a whole nother level of gratification. And we got to go in the locker room with our president or athletic director. And my suit's probably ruined, Ashley. But other than that, uh, it was just a really fun fun evening uh, to celebrate these young ladies. They put a lot of time in um, and they make a lot of sacrifices for each other. It's it's not easy to, to kind of get some minutes for some kids and others. And we're just, we have so many selfless teammates that are ready and they're great teammates. And um, and they did a great job that day and they, they executed the game plan. Worth being the suit being ruined. That's yeah, absolutely. Sure. Well, sure. we're in the final stretch, three games in five days, starting with uh, Sac State on Thursday. And that first go around was quite the nail biter. Down 17, came back and won by by one. What was the biggest takeaway from that game that you guys are going to execute on Thursday, knowing that now that there's a Big Sky Championship within reach for this team? Well, the biggest thing is we have to have a better start. Uh, we, we certainly did not have a great start, and I don't know if we can overcome that uh, start um, being on the road. We really relied on our fans to help us through that second half stretch. Um, uh, and then the second thing is we just have to be a lot more attack-minded. we got to be more aggressive defensively. We were very flat that game, and this team will pick you apart. They're very efficient offensively, and so uh, we're going to have to find ways to be more disruptive in that regard. But uh, just exciting uh, to see kind of what we do and uh, get this game plan uh, ready, ready Ready for battle on Thursday. Yeah, still a few games left before we can bring out the confetti. Good luck on the road. We'll focus on Thursday. But thank <laughs> there you. we go. Yeah, so starting on Thursday, they'll be on the road at Sacramento State. That game is tipping off at 8 o'clock. Then they'll travel up north to go to Portland State. And then they'll be back home for Eastern Washington for the regular season finale. It's going to be a fun one. Thank you, Ashley. And please show up uh, that last Monday for our senior night. Absolutely. Got to celebrate those seniors. We'll have more with Keaton Gologly coming up after the break on Bobcat Insider. Take coverage of the Cats with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider. Ashley Washburn alongside Keen Gologly. Here we go. This is it. Three games in five days for both the men and the women. What are you looking forward to with the men this week? For the men, you got to get things rolling. Jabril Bello has had a bit of a down last kind of week or so, and so he's going to be a guy that's going to have to be a really important factor. And as much as great Osabor has stepped up in that role, you're only going to go as far as your seniors lead you. And Jabril Bello is going to be a big, big key going into this weekend and then again on into the tournament. And I like how you said it's the seniors that have to lead you because this is what Montana State women need this week as they go on the road to Sacramento State and then Portland State because you get one win. You're clinching that Big Sky Championship, which would be so awesome. Of course, you want them to do that at home. But that's what's on uh, ahead for this Montana State women's team. And you want to get it done as quickly as possible. You don't Absolutely. want to leave anything to chance. Every championship is so, so special. So you can't leave any of that to chance as you go forward. And if you can keep it rolling and then you get yourself into that senior day on Monday, now you've got that momentum. You can have as much rest as you need to going into the Big Sky Tournament because as much as you want the regular season title, you want things continue 
continuing after Boise. Well, I think the best thing when we were talking to Benford about that Big Sky Championship, she said we're only focusing at the game at hand, which they win this game on Thursday. Obviously, they have a share of it. I do want to point out about that Sacramento State game, the first go around. Montana State was down 17 points at home, came back one by one point. And so I know that Sacramento State's probably coming into this game a little hungry for a win over Montana State, but I can promise you those Bobcats are just as hungry as well for that championship. No doubt. So their first opportunity clinches on Thursday, 8 p.m. Mountain Time over in Sacramento. The men are at home this weekend, 7 o'clock on Thursday against Sac State, and then the women have their senior day on Monday against Eastern Washington at 7 over at Worthington Arena. Next week is our final show. Thank you for tuning in. For Ashley Washburn, I'm Keaton Gologli. This has been Bobcat Insider.